I've been an AWS solution architect for a long time, and I've seen the good, the bad, and the ugly when it comes to AWS cloud architectures. In this video, I'm going to cover five AWS cloud architecture mistakes and how you can avoid them. Now, if you're new here, I'm Greg, creator of Thoughtful Techie Cloud. And each week, I create a video to help you navigate your AWS cloud and tech journey. If you haven't already, go ahead and subscribe right now. Now, these architecture mistakes are going to be aligned to five different categories. That's going to be security, cost, operations, reliability, and performance. And in each of these categories, I'm going to be covering some things you may not be doing. And later in the video, I'm going to give you one place you can go to to help you resolve everything. First up, we're going to cover security and some of the things you may not be doing at this level. Now, it's going to be too exhausting to cover every single problem you may have, but this video is to just really help you brainstorm and have you take a look at maybe some of the things you haven't thought about. I'll also include some links in the description below to where you can do a deeper dive on this to continue your learning process. For security, you really need to start off at the foundational level. If you have no idea how you operate your workloads on AWS securely, then perhaps you've got your biggest problem and you need to stop right there and just park the brakes. But let's take a look at some other categories within security. Identity and access management. Do you know how you are authenticating your human and machine accounts? Do you know how you're managing your permissions for your human and your machine accounts? What about detection? How are you detecting security events and responding to those? Don't have a plan? We need to get one. What about infrastructure protection? How are you protecting the network? How are you protecting your compute? If there's no plan in place for this, then it's a plan to fail. What about data protection? Are you even categorizing your data? What data should be encrypted? What data should not be encrypted? What data should be encrypted at rest? What about encryption in motion? If none of this is ringing a bell, then we got some big security problems we need to resolve. How do you respond when there's a security incident? Do you run around like a chicken with your head cut off? Or do you have a plan in place? These are just a few things you need to think about when it comes to your security architecture best practices. Now let's cover cost. I bet you never thought that cost was a part of the architecture, but it is. When you build the cloud architecture, it's pay for what you use. So you have to pay for this every month. If you make mistakes when you build the architecture, it could cost you a ton of money. Do you have a plan in place to govern usage? Do you have any monitoring set up to even tell you how much of the cloud you're using? Or are you surprised at the end of the month with a huge AWS bill? Have you taken a look at AWS data transfer charges and take into account how you've designed your application? Is this going to be in your favor? Or are you paying more for data transfer charges just because how you've built your architecture? If you've answered no to any of these, we need to take a closer look at cost. Now let's talk operations, because after you've built that cloud architecture, you got to operate it. And when you deploy it into production, that's not the finish line, that's the starting line, right? So let me ask you this. How are you thinking about observability? Observability is you have it in production and then you need to figure out, okay, what's green, what's yellow, and what's red in terms of your distributed cloud architecture. Don't have any observability in place? Then guess what? Your first alert might be from angry user calling into your help desk saying, hey, something doesn't work. And that's not the way you want to do it. Do you currently have a good handle on the health of your operational excellence? within your application. How do you operate that workload and manage the different events that could happen based on the usage of it? And then as you find issues with your operations, do you have a plan in place to evolve your operational plan over time? If not, then you might need to spend some time on improving your operational excellence. Next up, reliability, everybody's favorite. So reliability is when you go use your application, it needs to work. Now, if it's on the cloud, all the underlying components and distributed architecture, even if there's some sort of issue, it needs to be built to such a way that it's reliable enough that it continues to operate. Within AWS, there are various AWS service quotas. Are you managing those or are you hitting these quotas and then having an operational issue, which then spoils into a reliability issue? In your distributed application architecture, 
What if one of your underlying components fails? How does that affect the rest of your application? Is it a graceful degradation or is it instead a catastrophic failure? In order for your application to be reliable, you need to be monitoring. Do you have the monitoring in place? If not, how can you tell if your application is reliable or not? What about changes in demand? If it's a slow day, yeah, the application may work great, but let's say marketing wants to run a sales campaign. Can your application scale up to handle that load for a promotion? Or do you incur an outage? Are you backing up your data? Are you building a multi-AZ design so that your application is highly available and fault tolerant? And do you even test to see if your application is reliable? And what if your region goes down? Do you have disaster recovery in place? If you answer no to some of these, then you need to take a look at reliability closer. And our last cloud architecture mistake, performance. Building a performant architecture on AWS is not just throwing the biggest server at the problem. It's also about being efficient with the resources to make sure you have the proper performance at the right consumption and the right cost. Do you go through a formal process for knowing how to select the right resources, infrastructure, compute, database, networking, storage? How do you know your selections will meet the performance requirements of your application? And this applies to every AWS service that you select. Are you and your team on board to make sure your application has performance efficiency? If not, then you need to take a closer look at your performance architecture. Now, as promised, I told you I was gonna provide a way for how you could avoid these issues. And that's gonna be linked in the description below. It's called the AWS Well-Architected Framework. It's gonna cover the best practices for security, cost, operations, reliability, and performance. I definitely recommend you to take a look at this document as it's gonna help you take the guesswork out for how to build a well-architected application on AWS in regards to those five areas. If you have any questions, go ahead and pop those in the comments below. Make sure you like and share the video, and I'll see you in the next video.